right, guys, welcome to episode two of Reliance Talk. Uh, you'll probably notice I'm using a different program, um, hopefully a little higher quality video than the last time. I also did get my room painted finally. It's still kind of a mess, but, uh, but that's going well. Uh, you'll also notice whoop, over this shoulder here, uh, something I'm testing right now. It is the uh, GrowWatt Vita 550 power station. So stay tuned for that. Um, anyway, before we get into the video, I just wanted to ask if anyone out there is willing to be a guinea pig and come on and be a guest, the first guest of this, uh, this show, for lack of a better word, whatever to call it, um, I'm just looking for someone who wants to talk to me specifically about food storage, food production, that kind of thing as part of being self-reliant or uh, a prepper or whatever. So if you're interested in a 10 or 15 minute conversation that will be on a future video, email me at ldsreliance at gmail.com. All right, so the title of this video is a little bit of clickbait. I, I do understand that. Um, this video is not going to try to persuade you that water is not probably the most important prep because it is. But there are certain circumstances where energy, specifically uh, access to heat and cooling, uh, can be more deadly qu more quickly than dying of dehydration. Um, I have personal experience to this. Um, in February of 2021, I, I live in Texas, in the United States, first of all, but in February 2021, as probably many of you know, there were, uh, there was a huge blackout. Um, the electrical grid went down or it, it rolled up and down for several days. And it, this was in a record cold snap and it took power down for almost the entire state. It was, it was Dallas, it was Houston, it was the major metropolitan areas and it, it affected a lot of people, did a lot of damage. But more importantly, it killed 246 people. And that was directly because of how cold it was, not because they dehydrated or anything like that. Um, in fact, I know of someone personally uh, that was burning furniture in their wood fireplace to stay warm. That was how bad of a situation it was. It caught people totally by surprise. So, uh, but it's also not just cold, it's also heat related. So in the United States, and this isn't, have anything to do with natural disasters but just on a regular year there's 1300 people who die each year with heat related illness or death uh, they die because of heat related injuries and so obviously if a major power outage were to occur if the grid were to fail because of really high peak demand on a really hot day it's possible that people could die and so um, I think that this is an important thing for us to think about when we're thinking about preps, when we're thinking about being self-reliant and taking care of our families is having some source of power to be able to um, handle a crisis like that. Um, so let's, let's analyze this for a second. If a power outage struck, multiple day power outage, uh, you could probably find some water somehow. Whether, and I know this is gross, but you're going to do anything when you're dying of thirst. Uh, you, you would drink out of your toilet. Um, surely most people have some sodas or something in their home. Um, you could drain your water heater. There's, there might be a creek in your neighborhood. There's some access to water. Whether it's very potable or not is, is a question. But you're probably not going to die of dehydration if the power is out for three days. However, you could realistically, in, in a worst case scenario, die from exposure to the elements in a two or three day power outage. Um, so anyways, having said all that, what does this have to do with being self-reliant? Well, prepping is all about self-reliance. Um, not to get too political here, but the, uh, the world, and specifically the United States, and on many parts, there's a, a growing movement where people want the government to take care of them. They want them to control parts of their lives, to keep them safe, et cetera, et cetera. And generally speaking, I hate to say it, but they do a pretty good job. However, there are very notable cases where they don't. And I just listed one of them with the Texas 
uh, winter power outages in 2021. Uh, so whether you live in a, a generally conservative state or country like Texas, or whether you live in a, a liberal progressive state like California or country, um, you know, in California, they're banning fossil fuel, anything related to fossil fuels that they can get their hands on. They're banning it. They're banning small engines, leaf blowers, portable generators, things like that. Uh, and they're creating their own energy crisis. They want to. They want everyone to buy electric cars, and then they're turning around in the summer and telling them they can't charge their electric cars. So, again, I'm not trying to be political. I'm not trying to slam anybody. Texas did just as sucky of a job as as California is. But you. The point is, you need to be prepared in a pinch with your own energy. As much as I hate to say this, because I'm a big solar guy, solar is not the answer. It's, it's too expensive and almost by definition, it's not going to work well in these types of scenarios where you've got, it's in the winter and you've got a cold snap. It, my solar did jack squat in that winter outage because it was dark. The, it's in the winter, which there's not much sun anyways, and it was overcast the entire time. It helped me none. And, and my lithium batteries, guess what? When it's you know 20 degrees outside, wind chill of negative nine, they do nothing either. So solar's not the answer. Also, long-term battery storage isn't the answer either. Even if my lithium batteries were inside where it's warm, they're out in my shed, but even if they were inside where it was relatively warm, they still wouldn't have lasted me this whole time. When you're running multiple space heaters to keep warm, that unless you have a ton of them, you're not going to last through the, the outage. And so it's too expensive and impractical to just rely on a big battery bank. So what are the answers? Well, there's, there's kind of two that I would propose to you. Now, and this is my opinion. I'd love for anyone to chime in with their opinions in the comments below. But number one, this is what I'm going to recommend to everybody. In my opinion, everyone can afford a $400 2000 watt inverter generator. Gas powered, but uh, ideally dual fuel with propane and gas. Um, again, $400, if you save up for it, that's really not that big of a deal. And, and it could have many uses for you, but specifically that would protect you, you know, and then you'd obviously need like a five gallon jug of, of gas or something like that. But uh, the, and you'd have to rotate through the gas. This is a whole different subject to talk about. But pretty much anybody can afford that. And so um, that would be number one. But if you're going to argue with me and tell me with a straight face you can't afford that, okay, fine. Find a wood stove and get a cord of wood to, to take care of that. You don't have to use it. You can keep it in your garage, in your attic, um, wherever and just keep it for a rainy day or an outage specifically. Um, but and anyone should be able to accomplish those two things. Even if you're in a, an apartment, even if you're, you know, wherever, you do need to be thinking about these things because you're, you, you can't rely on your apartment complex or you can't rely on the electric company, you can't rely on the government, you can't rely on other people to take care of you when everyone is is trying to take care of themselves. So why is this so urgent? Well, there's a few reasons. Uh, one, like I already mentioned, there are places, you know, like California, again, not to pick only on California, but they're kind of the, the leaders of this kind of thing, but they're banning gas engines, small gas engines. And so, and, and they're trying to ban automobiles as well. But They've already banned leaf blowers. They've already banned several things. They're talking about banning um, portable gas generators for RV sites and things like that. So um, you're going to want to get your hands on one before they're gone and before prices start going up and so forth and so on. Um, get one now. Get one as soon as you can afford it and put it in your closet, whatever, and get some gas, obviously. But, but get that before you can't get access to it anymore. Um, there's also, and this is what is also driving the frequency of events like this, in my opinion, but, um, go, to go along with that, I've read articles recently, and it's a big topic right now in the United States where, 
Um, there are there are government pseudo government entities, not official government entities, but these these commissions and things that are looking at banning natural gas stoves because they think it's it's unhealthy. There's respiratory illnesses or whatever for people. Okay, whatever. But the point is that if they ban if if this succeeds, and and maybe it helps people's health. I don't know. I'm not gonna say it doesn't. But but let's say they do ban. Uh, natural gas stoves. Well, that's going to make it a whole lot less likely that new homes are going to bother connecting to the natural gas pipeline, which means your your dryer, your water heater, everything in your house must now run on electricity, which puts even more demand on the electric grid, which is already overtaxed and overburdened and unreliable. So this is going to get worse before it gets better, if it ever does get better. Um, this is just going to be a way of life for us. Um, we've seen, you know, places in Europe having extreme power problems as well. This isn't just the United States problem. Uh, and then the final point, we saw just recently how a couple dudes with guns who wanted to rob a store, a pawn shop or something, I can't remember what it was, but a couple dudes with guns in North Carolina took out power for 35,000 people for multiple days. Um, so if something like that can, ha can happen and could happen at the worst possible time and result in deaths, you know, we have, uh, climate change, all these things that are happening, whether you, uh, I, I think we can all admit that, that there's more natural disasters, there's the, the climate or the, the weather's getting wonky, whether we're causing it or not is a different debate, but, but there are lots of natural disasters happening. And so, um, the frequency of this is going to continue to rise, and I think that with the threat of cyber attacks as well, um, you know, when Russia loses this war, which they're guaranteed to lose, um, who are they going to get pissed at? The United States, because we're in the UK and, and other, other countries that are, that are supporting Ukraine right now. So um, cyber attacks from Russia and other places, North Korea and that uh, are going to continue and eventually they're going to hit. Somebody's going to get lucky and find some back door or something and take out a big power grid, not just 35,000 people in North Carolina, but the entire eastern seaboard or, or whatever. And that's going to lead to deaths. And that is preventable if you will invest a little bit into energy preparation. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about the subject. Thank you for watching another episode. Stay tuned for next Thursday for another episode. Thanks for watching.